Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for August 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. That is Monday through Thursday. Now this is a general reading. You know, you know, I'm going to be using my Radley Valentine decks. This time, though, it's a little, I'm going to change it up just a little bit. I will be using my Archangel Power Tarot cards for the main reading. And instead of my angel cards coming out, my guardian angels wanted to come out, so we will pull one of those. I will also use my Emily Anderson crystal deck, and in this introduction, I will use my Weight Rider traditional tarot deck, okay? Now, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. Okay, now, I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. Whatever the words come out, ugh, they're just going to come out. So we will see what we will see. Um, anything that is reversed has a little stronger energy. I do talk about higher power. Um, that's who I connect with. That's who I call. Now, um, that could be, though, your higher power, your guardian angel, your spirit guides, your voice of the universe, your divine, the source, whoever that is for you. Okay, so there's, you know, just what I call is not necessarily what you call. Okay, anyway, I talk about this week that there's been lots of weird stuff going on. So, you know, we have the new moon, which was on the 8th, that was in Leo. Now we have those two full moons in um, Aquarius. They're bracketing the Leo season. Now the new moon um, basically... This new moon, when it is on the 8th, which is the Lion's Gate or the Lion's Portal Gate, Gate Portal, whatever you want to say about this, this is happening on the 8th also. So all of these things, the two full moons in Aquarius, the new moon that's in Leo falling on the 8th of August, which is that Portal's Gate, that Lion's Gate, this happens, um, like the last time this happened was eight years ago. The prior time this happened was 11, and that's how that works. It, it's like an 8-11, 8-11 type of cycle. So this is not common. Now, we also have a Friday the 13th in August. That's not common. That happens a minimum of every six years. You know, I think the last time, though, this was 11 years ago, so we do have that 1-1 one, one energy. And you have to remember when I was talking about the um, 8 and the, you know, and 11 years with the full moon. So we have that 1-1, one, one, we have that 8 energy. So there's a lot of different energies going on for Leo season. And that makes things a little bit stronger, a little bit um, something that we ne don't necessarily um, deal with um, on our, in a common way way okay so let's put it that way now also on the 11th of this week this month we have mercury which is about communication there's a lot of karma with that that happens a little bit more you know karma is a little more uh tangible when it's retro okay but there is karma with mercury mercury um is a very fast planet so things could be happening very very fast however mercury goes into virgo and this is on the 11th virgo is an earth sign earth signs like to ground things earth signs like to make things very clear now i know that because i have people in my life that are virgos and they want to be very clear with their communication so there could be something you know during this time that there's just very clear 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 communication happening Okay, so we have that. Now, of course, we have the other things that I've been talking about. Um, you know, Saturn in Aquarius, reality, seeing the reality versus the illusion. So lots of stuff going on. But remember, Saturn in Aquarius, whether it be retro or going forward, um, that's going to be happening for at least another, what is it, a, another year and a half. So we are just, we're not even in the middle of it. But we're getting there. We're getting there. And, of course, Aquarius with Jupiter, which is a, which kind of um, gives a little bit of the comfort during all of this rough times. Now, let me see what we have. I'm going to use my Weight Rider tarot cards because they have been calling to me a little bit more so. And I do feel that they're good for the introduction. 
and I do feel that they're, um, you know, it gives kind of an overview of what's going on in possibly the bigger scheme of things. Now, when we do our readings for the signs, we all have to live within the big scheme of things. So let's see what we might have here. One, two, and three. Remember, numbers do have strong meanings. Many times numbers are um, you know, messages from the universe, from angels. So write them down. Also, too, if any archangel comes to visit, write that name down, too. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, first card. Okay, here we have this, the chariot. Now, it was reversed, a little stronger energy. The chariot is a number seven. Seven, I feel, is a divine number. It, I always liken it to the divine umbrella, the divine protection. Now, the chariot also, to me, is kind of hands up, hands off. Things are going to happen whether you want them to happen or not. You don't necessarily have the control, but there is a divine force controlling the way things are. Now, chariot is also about um, fast moving. So there, you know, there could be the energies, and we know that the energies are very strong. They are very fast. They are very, very intense. So the chariot brings a lot of things. Now, the chariot, too, in a personal reading, could bring about a promotion, career change. But again, I always feel very quick energy, quick movement. Something could be changing, but some, or something could be in the process of changing, and it's almost a little overwhelming. And the best thing to do is hands off and leave it to your higher power. Your next card is the Queen of Wands. Now, Queen's underlying energy is water energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. It's very fluid. It's very emotional. But wands energy, rods energy, this is fire energy. And that is your Leo, Sagittarius, and your Aries. Now, queens stand in their power. The queen of wands knows who she is. Now, it doesn't matter if you, be, if you are a male or female. We all have some queen of wands in us. But the queen of wands knows who and what she is. She knows what is owed to her. She knows the allegiance that should be there. She looks, you know, she does have the compassion of the water, of, you know, have that emotional, I do know, I love you, I understand. But the wands is also very passionate. She will take this and she will bring it, whatever she feels it needs to be done to the right, you know, to the right of, you know, meaning righteousness, um, she's going to, you know, she's going to promote that. She is going to go after that. She is going to rule in that favor. But there is a lot of emotions with the Queen of Wands. There is a lot of passion with the Queen of Wands. But never doubt the Queen of Wands knows who she is. Okay, let's go on. The Knight of Pentacles. Now, the Knights, and I'm going to stop this verbal. Sorry about that. I had to cough. The Knight of pentacles, you know, very straightforward, very much going after what I need to go after, very much, you know, do not stop me. Pentacles in itself is our earth energy. And again, that is our Virgo. And I think that that's interesting that we have Mercury going into Virgo, um, you know, on the 11th. So that's our Virgo, our Capricorn. It is also our Taurus. Again, earth energy, home, money, house, how we create our money, how we create our career, what are we going after. Knights are very directional. You know, you point them in the, in the way to go. The universe points them in the way to go. Things happen. You go there. Now, knights underlying energy, because all the quartz cards, they're not just what, you know, wands is just not fire. Pentacles is just not, um, you know, earth when we're talking about court cards. The underlying energy for the knight is fire. Now we talked about that. So there is a passion. There is a, you know, I am moving towards this. I am seeing what I want. I am going towards this. So the, again, there is a passion in this. But the Knight of Pentacle is like, oh, we've got some work to do. And oh my gosh, let's get, let's, we got to start working on this. There has to be so, you know, so whatever this change is, whatever this change is, whatever this is, you know, I know how it's supposed to be. I know what life is supposed to be like. You know, I know what is owed to me. I know what is, oh, you know, what this connection is. It's not really a selfish energy. So don't think of it as, you know, yes, this is what's owed to me. No, no, no. It's just, I know what is needed. I know what is owed. Okay. And the Knight of Pentacles is very much, 
you know, we're going after this. We're doing this. This is not, nothing is stopping us anymore. Okay? So we will see how that all connects with this week. But we do have, and did I, I did tell you about Friday the 13th coming up, didn't I? If I didn't, Friday the 13th in August, okay? Now, that's in itself is weird. It is strange. And Friday the 13th, I, yeah, I think I did, comes every, in August, comes every six to six plus years. Um, the last time it happened, I think that it was, did I say 2010? So that would have been 11 years. So again, we have that 11 year um, anniversary. So we have a lot of one ones. We have a lot of eights. Let us see where we're going for this week. And let's begin our readings. Hello, my Virgos. How are you? Are you getting ready for your season? I hope you are, because this is where you wrap up a lot of energies and kind of come to a sense of, I'm getting, I know what I want to do. Kind of that thing. I know what I want to do when I grow up. No matter what age we are, we still have more to, uh, more to accomplish, more to do. And this is kind of you getting a firmer foot. So when you enter into Virgo season, you now, you have a better sense of direction. Do we always know the right way of going? Of course not. But we, you know, you, my Virgos, connect with your higher power quite a bit. And, you know, this will give you that better sense of footing. Anyway, let's see what we have for my Virgos today. Oh, please remember, remember, remember to like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell notification. You help me stay on YouTube. Thank you. Okay. These are reversed. This one's not. Let's see what we have for my Virgos. First card is the Four of Ariel. Okay, so the four Fours have some... Um, very strong foundational energy, it's stability, it's, an, um, it's also leadership, it has, you know, it's, it really has a sense of direction to it. And also to remember to write it down. Ariel is your energy. I'm feeling that they're, now they're going to talk about money come and go and give and receive and type of thing, and there is a reciprocity. I am feeling like this is you working with your, um, the universe, with your angels, your guardian angels, your whoever it is to you. And I feel like this is creating a stability within possibly your job itself, possibly in your financial foundation, okay? So this is a week for some stability. This is a week to really clear the air. This is a week to, have, to see things very, very, um, very straightforward ways forward, okay? Very, no, this is, I want to know what it is. So there is a lot of honesty here. And also, too, Mercury goes into Virgo on the 11th. Also, the Lion's Gate closes on the 11th. All of this 8 on 11 stuff going on. So there is a lot of figuring out where you're standing, where you're going, and what you want this week. Okay, Ariel again, your energy, Capricorn, Taurus, money, solid energy, home energy, how you create your, um, your money, possibly even your career energy. When you give, you also receive. Being resistant to change. Extremes in how you save or spend money. I feel like this is a, I, I feel really you being very bold. And, and, and should I say bold? Because this is really your own personal business. You have a right to be bold when you are discussing your money, when you are discussing anything that has to do with your security or your foundation. So it's not necessarily that it's bold. It's just put it out there. Put it out there. Next card. New beginning. So, okay, is that, is that, okay, is that your job? Is that your career? Is that a home? Is that any, you know, personal energy? Remember relationships, job, work, job, career, personal, interpersonal, intimate, family, or home. There is this karmic thing coming. There is this universal energy. So much stuff happening. This is, again, I feel like this is clearing clearing a, a big path for you, or it, it's it's like taking all the, the, the wild tumbleweeds out, and it's setting you on a clearer path. Now, is this something brand new happening? I don't know that it's something brand new happening, but the clarity, the clarity of what you want and where you're going, that's new, okay? It just feels like the pieces are now falling in place, and you are beginning to have more, comp more beginning, no, you are still developing your confidence 
and you are you know you are learning your strengths more and more and more. Alrighty. So we have the two zero. So two has some choices. It also means coming together with someone else. Uh, zero is God, universal source energy. Now this is also Archangel Jeremiah. So remember, four two zero, something might be there. Starting a new life, finding your purpose. I think that's really what this is. It's like finding your path, finding your purpose. This week will provide that clear. Will provide more clarity. When I, you know, I don't want to be so that this is the this is that time. Well, this could be that time. This could be one of those pivotal times in your life. But we do have more to come. Okay. A forgiving and compassionate review of the past. Let things go. If you want, if you want the universe to open things for you, forgive you for you know. And in my Virgos, you do hold on to every mistake you made. Let those go, but then let go of the other people's too. Okay. Next card, the Empress. So now we have a four, two, zero, and a three. Three has creativity. There is a lot of power in three. You know, there. You know, you do something three times. You say something three times. You get two other people with you to, you know, to agree on something. Lots of pre, lots of supernatural power with that. It's also the Trinity. So there's a lot of um, positive, creative energy with threes. Now the Empress is Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel is the divine messenger. Gabriel also, you know, I call upon Gabriel every day to you know, to protect and transmute any any negative energies that come my way into divine love. So Gabriel has a lot of this um, transitional and a lot of this caring, nurturing type of energy too. The Empress has that. Now I look at the Empress as the female part of the universe, okay? Now, and you don't, you know, male, female, we all, we all can relate to that. So this is kind of that female spirit, that female part, that female um, maternal, I want to care for you type of energy. And, you know, and when we have, and the fact that, you know, Mercury, remember, I'm always talking when Mercury retrograde, Mercury in itself has a lot of karmic stuff. And when it goes retrograde, I see the Empress really trying to fix things in our lives. Now, remember, Mercury is going into Virgo on the 11th. So I cannot think. I cannot not think that the Empress wants to make things better in your life. All right. Time to act upon your plans. Creativity is rewarded. Luxurious or abundant resources. Now, when I was pulling out my angel cards, it was like, no, 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 don't take those. Yeah, so that's why I went with my guardian angels. Okay, and you want to just fall right out. Here we are. Guardian angel. Messenger of action. Now, action is our fire energy. Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, passionate, burning, and determined. Now, I'm just going to read this because it seems like this is talking about exactly what you need to hear. Okay, and remember the 4203. It could be 423, but it could be 4203 also. Something new and exciting related to creativity of your, uh, of your career comes to your attention. You feel an eagerness to learn, and you're ready to get going, although you may feel insecure. We talk about that. Do it anyway. This card represents someone in your life, or maybe you, who is creative, enthusiastic, and fascinated by life, and who wants to try everything. That could be a mentor, but like they said, that could be you. There's this blossoming happening for you, my Virgos. But it's also, you know, the blossoming isn't going to be as scary because you're grounded. You're very grounded. So it's a controlled blossom. It's kind of like, you know, the hothouse, the hothouse flowers. Okay. They still come out beautiful. Uh, they just they just have a little bit more, you know, they're just a little bit more controlled. Okay, let's see what cr crystal or energy for my Virgos. Here we are. Reversed. <coughs> Excuse me, turquoise, my turquoise. I'm going to stop this for a moment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not sure what happened there, but that's okay. Turquoise, leadership qualities, clear communication, prosperity, success. I love this. I love this reading for you. Okay, let's claim it. Claiming it for my Virgos. I feel very calm and very grounded with your reading. Now, my Virgos... 
Remember to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell because it really does help and I thank you. As always, my Virgos, know that you are loved, stay shining, and be blessed. Bye-bye.